Hello guys and welcome back. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you for all your support. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and in today's video I'm going to talk about the fractional area change. So let's start. First, let's start with the right heart. The structure and function of the right side of the heart is influenced by a wide range of physiological and pathological conditions. Quantification of right heart parameters is important in a variety of clinical scenarios including diagnosis, prognostication and monitoring response to therapy. Although echocardiography remains the first-line imaging investigation for right heart assessment, published guidance is relatively sparse in comparison to that for the left ventricle. A comprehensive evaluation of the right ventricle by echocardiography is essential for the diagnosis and management of conditions affecting the right heart. Indices of right ventricular size and function are prognostic in a range of congenital and acquired diseases of both left and right heart etiologies. The position of the right ventricle within the thorax along with its complex structure and contraction pattern all pose additional challenges to echocardiography. The right ventricle is the most anteriorly positioned cardiac chamber located immediately behind the sternum. It is thin walled with prominent trabeculations and a complex geometry. Under normal loading conditions, the right ventricle has a triangular shape when viewed from the side and a crescentic shape in the sagittal plane, wrapping around the conical left ventricle. And how can we assess the right heart systolic function? The echocardiographic evaluation of right ventricular systolic function can be performed qualitatively and quantitatively by two and three dimensional methods and by regional and global assessment. There are benefits and limitations that are inherent in all of these approaches the significances of which should be considered relative to the pathology being investigated. Tricuspid annular plane systolic excursion, pulsed Doppler S-wave and fractional area change have by far the most abundantly available reference data to support their use. Therefore, at least one of these three metrics should be routinely reported when assessing right ventricular systolic function. Furthermore, either a measurement that incorporates radial right ventricular function, such as fractional area change, or at least a qualitative statement regarding radial right ventricular function should be routinely made since TAPSI and S-Wave only reflect longitudinal right ventricular function. More contemporary techniques such as 3D and speckle tracking echocardiography offer novel insights into right ventricular function assessment. But with the caveats of less validation data and standardization across vendor platforms. These limitations should not hinder their development and dissemination in both clinical and academic echocardiography, but should nevertheless be taken into account to ensure the standardization of data acquisition, post-processing, and interpretation. 
several methods has been proposed for quantification of right ventricular function. Obviously, you don't need to perform all of them, but use at least one or two, especially in patients in whom right ventricular function is very important. Also consider the fact that echo is by far less accurate than cardiac magnetic resonance imaging. Cardiac magnetic resonance is the gold standard for quantification of right ventricular function. However, this method also has limitations. In order to assess the right ventricular systolic function, we can perform a qualitative assessment or a quantitative assessment. Qualitative assessment is a visual assessment of the right ventricular systolic function, commonly known as the eyeball method. Quantitative assessment is when we actually use measurements to assess the right ventricular systolic function. Some of them are TAPSI, Doppler S-wave, fractional area change, speckle tracking, and 3D. In this video specifically, we are going to learn how to measure the fractional area change. The most commonly used method for the assessment of right ventricular systolic function is qualitative assessment or the eyeball method. However, qualitative assessment should be avoided as a single method or it should be used in conjunction with other quantitative measures and include several views to thoroughly examine right ventricular contractility. So, what is the fractional area change? The fractional area change is a two-dimensional measure of right ventricular global systolic function. It is obtained from the apical four chamber view and is calculated as the difference in end diastolic area and end systolic area divided by the end diastolic area. The image must be optimized with focus on maximizing the right ventricular area and clearly delineating the border of the endocardium in the setting of trabeculations, particularly the free wall to ensure accurate tracing of the right ventricular cavity. The fractional area change is the manual tracing of the right ventricular endocardial border from the lateral tricuspid annulus along the free wall to the apex and back along the interventricular septum to the medial tricuspid valve annulus, repeated at end diastole and end systole. A disadvantage of this measure is that it neglects the contribution of the right ventricular outflow tract to overall systolic function. Here you can see the fractional area change formula. This is a quick and easy calculation, so don't be afraid to use your calculator if your machine doesn't have a measurement package for this measurement. The fractional area change has been found to correlate with magnetic resonance derived right ventricular ejection fraction, as well as to predict outcome in adult patients with myocardial infarction and pulmonary hypertension. Also, the fractional area change is preserved after pericardiotomy as opposed to other measures of right ventricular function such as TAPSI and therefore is a preferable method with which to assess right ventricular function postoperatively 
in the setting of an alter right ventricular function. Diffractional area change is a measurement that provides an estimate of the global right ventricular systolic function. This is a formula to calculate the percentage of area change within the right ventricle between diastole and systole. The value provided is a percentage but do not confuse this with the ejection fraction. The fractional area change has established prognostic value, reflects both longitudinal and radial components of right ventricular contraction and correlates with right ventricular ejection fraction by cardiac magnetic resonance. Now, how to measure the fractional area change? First, Obtain a right ventricular focus apical for chamber view. Second, always ensure the entire right ventricle is contained in imaging sector during both systole and diastole. Third, trace the right ventricular area in diastole. And fourth, Trace now the right ventricular area in systole. Pitfalls to avoid when measuring fractional area change. Avoid foreshortening of the right ventricle. Be sure to include the entire apex and free wall. Trace the endocardial border. Do not trace the borders of the moderator band and trabeculations, only trace the right ventricular endocardial border. And most important, don't measure what you don't see. Remember there are other methods to evaluating right ventricular function you can use, like TAPSI or S-Wave. We can also mention some advantages of this method. The fractional area change has established prognostic value. Also, the right ventricular fractional area change is found to be an independent predictor of heart failure, sudden death, stroke, and mortality in patients after pulmonary embolectomy. With this method, we can also obtain longitudinal and radial components of right ventricular contraction. And the fractional area change correlates with cardiac magnetic resonance. This method also has limitations. The fractional area change neglects contribution of right ventricular outflow tract to overall right ventricular function. And this method has limited interobserver reproducibility. Normal right ventricular fractional area change values. In females, normal values are equal or more than 35%. In males, normal values are equal or more than 30%. Now I'm going to show you a video of me measuring the fractional area change. This is a quick and easy measurement and hopefully with this video I can answer all your doubts. To obtain the fractional area change, first find your apical for chamber view. Now zoom in the right ventricle. Freeze the image at end of diastole and trace the diastolic area of the right ventricle. 
make sure you can fully visualize the right ventricle. Trace the endocardial border from the lateral annulus along the free wall to the apex and back to the septal annulus. Now that you have the diastolic area of the right ventricle, freeze the image at end of systole. Trace again the right ventricular area now in systole, in the same way you did before. And that's it, with these two areas you will obtain the fractional area change. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Bye!